Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Augustus the Animator. As always, a friendly reminder to please like and subscribe to this channel and this video. Um, today's tutorial is about this foggy mountain scene. It's super easy to do. All it is is a few simple shape layers and some smart selections with colors, but mostly just some fractal noise and a couple keyframes to make this pretty realistic looking fog. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, let's get after it. So we're starting out in a square composition at 30 frames per second, but do whatever composition works for you, whatever settings. Just going to grab the... actually I'm going to start with a solid, hit command Y, bring up a new solid. We'll call this BG for background. Color doesn't matter because we're going to do a quick gradient on it. I'm just going to do help grad gradient ramp. We're just going to do a simple one. And I like to do blue sky for just a sky background. Some blue sky mixed with a little bit of yellow for like kind of a dawn type look, like early light. Let's maybe do like that. Boom. Great. We'll lock that and assume that it looks great. Uh, okay. Let's make some mountains. Now, these aren't going to be fancy Bob Ross mountains, but you know what? They will do. And I found the best way to make these is to not really think too hard just don't think too hard about it, so kind of just do, 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 boom, and make a shape layer that has like an interesting line this way and just covers up um, the whole rest of your composition versus having it cut off like right here. Because you never really know what you're going to do with it, like maybe you'll have these pop in separately, um, so it's just good to cover up that whole area. And I'm just going to make these a little less smooth look them a little, make them look a little bit more mountainous, whatever. So we're going to do that, and then I promise there's a plan for this, it won't look this gross. Um, we're just going to do shades of like bluish for now. Great, and then I'm going to do another one, just maybe, and kind of do like a crisscross. So like if this is going this way, we'll have this one going this way a little bit more. Let's just do like something like this. Oops. Over here. Great. And obviously, <laughs> some of these look like a little lumpy. And that's cool. All you gotta do is go back and adjust a couple things. I'm gonna hit Option. Where am I? Yeah, hit Option to make a point with no handles, have handles. It'll smooth it out. So you can adjust some things, which is great. Just gonna do some of these a little less smooth. <clears throat> we'll call that good. Obviously, it's not gonna be super realistic, but it's cool. That's this is not a tutorial on how to do mountains necessarily, as it is like foggy mountains and setting up your scene. That's just not my area of expertise. And I'm also gonna put this first darker layer that we made above this so that it's in front of it. Great. This, yeah, do that a little bit. Maybe even move this guy down a titch. Let's make another one. I'm just gonna make it lighter right away. There's gonna be more contrast for things that are in your foreground, like this guy, and there's gonna be less contrast um, with things that are in the background. And that's an important thing to remember while making these shapes and want if you want it to read as mountains in the distance. <clears throat> Alright, look at those crazy good mountains. Maybe make some of these a little lower. Okay, move him to the bottom. Yeah, you can already sort of see, like, okay, yeah, this is, like, this is mountainy. I can tell what this person is trying to do. And what more could you ask for? Okay, I'm just going to do one more. Make this kind of substantially lighter. And then have him come along. I'm just going to have him go under here. Sort of have one peak right here, maybe. Have him come down. It doesn't look too great. It looks like the mountain from the Grinch. If anyone has seen that. Classic. Okay. 
Um, hit shift to deselect the point. Just grab it again. Make this a little less weird. Great. And let's move him below. Great. And that sort of looks like mountains, right? Mountains at dawn or whatever. I'll make this a little darker to have it stand out a little more as like foreground. Great. Okay. So we've got our layers and now we want to create even more space between these layers by having a fog appearance. And we're going to do that with the wonderful fractal noise effect. So I'm going to hit command Y to do a new solid. Bam. I'm going to put him, let's see, just below this first layer, I think is what I want to do. And we are going to do, instead of looking for it, I'm just going to do fractal in my search. <clears throat> yes, noise and grain, fractal noise. So with our fractal noise, um, the settings that are default, just like basic and soft linear, are actually going to be the starting point for what we want. Because everything else looks a little too like structured, and that just like looks a little bit weird, even though you'd think, you'd think cloudy would maybe work better. It doesn't, in my opinion. I'm just going to do basic, and we are going to up the complexity a little bit, because that just kind of increases the detail as you zoom in. So we're going to twirl down transform and make this a little bit bigger to kind of just look like bigger sort of areas of cloud. Great. And then, let's see, I will make our evolution change a little bit. So I'm going to keyframe it right now. I'm just going to go up to like 10 seconds for this. Hit N to reduce my work area, and then we'll crank this. We'll do like maybe two revolutions of that. If you crank it a ton, let's see how this looks. I can barely see it because my computer is being slow. But it gives it a little bit of like life and movement, which is nice. I may have even given it a bit too much. It'll look a little otherworldly if you do crank it or like a time lapse, which is pretty fun. But I don't want that for this. So we're just going to do that, which is nice. And then. I'm going to keyframe my offset turbulence, which is kind of just basically making, um, it's just like a position keyframe for the fractal noise, versus if you move this whole solid, then, you know, that doesn't work necessarily. So it'll move the fractal noise within the shape, which is great. So I've keyframed that, let's go over to the end, and maybe look like it, have it look like it's drifting up the mountain. I don't actually know what fog does, I think that's a thing. So we'll kind of just do that going up the mountain, it's great. Yeah, okay, we'll start with that. And now what we're going to do is make a mask on this. So I'm actually going to make this invisible quick. I think I will have this in front of this first mountain, actually, and it's good that it's set up this way, because now I can use this as a guide for my mask. So I'm going to hit the pen tool, and on my solid with the fog. We're just going to do a really loose, similar shape here. And don't worry, it'll be look better than that. Now we're going to put this in front of the actual mountain piece. And then hit M for mask. If you hit it twice, it brings on all the properties. We are going to feather this. Oh my, that's so blue. Interesting. I did not realize the, the fill color of your solid affected this. Uh, let's quickly, let's hit shift command Y, bring up these guys and just do, I did not know that. Uh, we'll just make it a gray, like the fog, foggy gray. I'll do this. Great. Problem solved. Okay. So we have that. Let's do, let's do max, mask extension. We'll do that down a little. I think I'll actually reduce this feather. Actually, no I won't. I'm going to increase it. Reduce this. Alright, you can see it's already looking a little bit foggy, which is great. I think... Yeah, I'm going to reduce the scale even though I cranked it up. I was wrong, alright? To have it, it'll have a little bit more variation if we don't have the scale cranked up so high. 
And I'm also going to hit U to bring down my keyframes, move over to the end, and for the, uh, what is this, the offset turbulence one, the position, basically, I'm going to have it go a little bit to the left as well. So it's a diagonal path instead of like straight up, a little bit more to the left. Oh, shoot. So what I did was a silly mistake. I clicked on this property which selected both keyframes, and since I changed it while hovering over a keyframe, my starting or both keyframes were changed to be this, so there's still no movement, which was silly. So now without them both selected, I'm just going to crank it while on this one. Silly me. There we go. And I'm also going to crank up the evolution a little bit, I think. Excellent. And I might even, I'm going to reduce the opacity on this just a little. To have it be a little softer. Great, and there we have a little bit of fog. Let's do that again. Just duplicate this layer, put them down below this guy. We'll change our mask to fit our needs for this next uh, mountain shape. Move this down a little. And since, since the mask is so feathered, you don't have to worry too much about the exact shape of it. Um, but you know. So let's see, with this one, I am going to hit U, U. Just kidding. I'm going to hit U to bring down the properties. Um, under scale for this one, I'll twirl down transform. I'm going to do a, a smaller scale so it does look like it's actually farther away. But we're also going to turn the contrast down a little bit because this is farther away, and as you get farther from your point of view, things have less contrast. So, let's see. I'm also going to have it, instead of gliding to the left, I'm going to have it glide to the right. So let's do something. That's probably like way too much. There we go. Just do a little something like that. And you know, what would be great is if I could actually see this in real time, just to see how that evolution is really looking. Because um, again, if it's too cranked, it's going to look a little funky, just like a little too, maybe like a little too stylistic if you're going for a realistic look. But if it's too little, it might look a little boring, which I think is currently what I'm at. We've got a little bit of variation there. That's not too bad. Excellent. And what I'm actually going to do also is have this piece not move over as far because it's moving seems like a little faster than this and that again you're going to want this to be looking like it's moving slower because it's farther from camera and it's you know this will um, cover a greater distance to the eye and this opacity I'm going to crank down even a little more have it be nice and soft I might move the mask up a little get it to cover some of these areas. And with this one, hit MM to bring up my mask properties. I'm going to reduce the feather on this a little because it doesn't look so spread out because again that's just going to make it look like it's maybe a little farther away. Alright, and I'm just going to duplicate this once more. Hit tilde over this to actually be able to see it. Move this down. I might move it down below both layers. <coughs> Excuse me. Just kind of cover two birds with one stone. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Oh, yeah. Let's put it above this guy. Sorry. Yeah, you could do it, you know, exactly layer by layer. I am not going to. Because it still, it still reads pretty well, even if you put it over multiple layers of your mountain. So let's move this. Have this guy shift to the left. Let's see, starting at 4.22, so let's have an end, you know, really not too much different than that, because I don't want it to look like it's moving too fast for this far away piece of, of fog. Oops, double-clicked on my solid, no big deal, click up here, do comp composition. Okay, and then let's shift this mask to be a little closer to what we need, instead of this random hoo-ha. Um... Do that. Yeah, we'll do something like that. Let me shift this up to make sure that we got at least a little bit covering up this mountain here. Okay, 
great. And then these settings, I am going to twirl down, transform, make the scale even smaller. Not too small though. That was that was a little, a little too small. That looks okay because it's smaller than this one. Contrast, I'm going to turn down to be even less. And let's see, mask extension at mm. Oops. Gonna crank that down, or excuse me, not mask extension. I'm sorry, the feather. Gonna crank down a little more, and then also the opacity a little less. Okay, it's a little difficult to see how this is looking because it's not playing in real time for me just yet. Okay, maybe a little too subtle. I'm kind of losing it, I think, back here. 17% might be a little, a little low. Oops, so is zero. Let's do like 25. There we go. Okay. You know, even on this first one, I might lower the contrast a little. This is looking a little, a little too um, patchy. I'm going to let this render quick so we can see it in real time. Okay, so this is rendered. And actually, as I look at this, one more thing I'm going to do is duplicate this bad boy, this first one. Hit T on both of these to lower both of their opacities a little. I'm just going to have two layers on here to make and have one go a little faster than the other just so it looks like um, there's some depth, even more depth to this. Let's see, I'm gonna have them go faster to the left but a little slower up and down. We'll just kinda see how that looks. And what I'm gonna do to make sure these look different and not like duplicates of each other is, I think under evolution options? Yeah, random seed, just like twirl this to be anything other than zero. And that'll, like again, randomize the fractal noise because fractal noise is like a, I think it's like a random something. Um, <laughs> it's a random something, guys. But yeah, that will randomize it and make it look different than the other layer that you already have. I think I need to make this one move a little slower to have these read. Make him go up a little more, but right a little less. So you can really get some of that parallax. We'll wait for this to render quick. All right, this is rendered, and now you can see there's a little bit more movement. It looks like a little more depth to this, like it could actually be a 3D volume of fog. And is it moving like a little quick? I think it is, but I do think it looks really interesting. Um, and it's like a really fun, easy way to do pretty realistic looking fog. Fractal noise can be used for so many things. This is just one use of it, and it's pretty realistic looking fog. And I think if you do it well and just mess with your settings, um, you can achieve a really good look for whatever your scene is. If it's like a spooky horror thing, or if it's like a foggy mountain, or just a foggy forest, whatever you're gonna do. So that is the tutorial. I hope you can use these brand new skills that you just learned to do some cool environments, or something with smoke, or whatever, or a brand new use of turbulent dis or a fractal noise that I've never even thought about. So if you do something cool with it, feel free to post it below. I'd love to see it. Um, also, please like, subscribe, and comment. That would be wonderful. And as always, let me know if there's anything in particular you would like to see, and I'd be happy to do a tutorial on it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.